What's up, folks? It is time for the next episode of Monday's Middle Earth as we read through the Lord of the Rings and work our way to the Silmarillion. And we've been doing this. It's, it's, it's been a chunk. It's been a long road to now. Um, but we are finally in the last stages of the Return of the King, which means um, we're back to the Sam and Frodo journey for the moment. Um, this is Book 6, Chapter 1, The Tower of Kirith Ungul. And we pick up with where we had left off with that cliffhanger at the end of the two towers. So going back to what we were talking about during last week's episode at the end of Book 5, you know, the whole party as they go to the, the, the gates of Mordor, and they meet with the mouth of Sauron, and he throws down the chain mail, or the mithril coat, and the, the sword, and stuff. You know, there's this moment, and the cloak, you know, there's this moment of, oh my god, Frodo's dead. Um, because when this was published, and when I first read it as a child, that cliffhanger was like, oh, no, Frodo's dead. And then you pick up, and, and Sam is on his own in this first chapter. If you've never read this before, that could be a very, very, very powerful moment of not knowing what to expect from the rest of the book. So we're going to be reading through this. Um, if it's your first time here, welcome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. As always, um, I've been doing this series. Originally, it started off as a way to keep up to date with the Rings of Power and have better conversations around the Ring of Power, the Rings of Power show. But then I realized that it was going to take way, way, way more time to read through The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Silmarillion. And it has since evolved into a thing that I try to do every Monday. Um, I think I've missed a couple episodes here and there because of holidays and the like. But otherwise, we've been going steady since we first started. I don't even know when we started. I feel like it was almost a year ago, but not quite. <laughs> All right, I apologize for the sniffles and stuff this morning. There's a flu bug going around. I don't know if that, it's that or the cold weather, but we're going to dive in. Chapter 1 of Book 6, The Tower of Kirith Ungol. Sam is all alone outside the undergate of the orc's stronghold, with its brazen doors shut firmly in his face. Now, we know from where the book had previously left off that at the very last minute, Sam finds out that Frodo was, was at least suspected to be alive because the orcs were taking him off, saying that he'd only been jabbed by Shelob. Um, but Merry Pippin, Gimli, Legolas, Gandalf, Aragorn, they don't know that. So we pick up with Sam um, in a hurry here, he can't get in through the gates. He's starting to become desperate. Um, it says here he realized he no longer had any doubt about his duty. He must rescue his master or perish in the attempt. <laughs> so we get a time reckoning here. It says out westward in the world it was drawing to noon upon the 14th day of March in the Shire Reckoning. Even now Aragorn was leading the Black Fleet from Pelargir while Mary is riding from the, with the Rohirrim down the Stone Wayne Valley, while in Minas Tirith the flames are rising and Pippin watched the madness growing in the eyes of Denethor. So all of this is happening while this is what Sam is doing. So Tolkien is establishing the timeline for this particular uh, section of the book so that we understand where we are. So we're jumping back so that we can now move forward with the events of Frodo and Sam and get up to speed with where everybody can join us at the end of the book. Here's a good question. Does anyone out here who watches this episode, to watch these show know, um, when this was originally written by Tolkien, I don't think I've ever researched what was the original order of the chapters that he wanted things published in. Because remember, everyone, I think it's common knowledge at this point that the that the book was split into three volumes by the publisher because it was too big. So when he wrote it, was it laid out in six books in the same way that it is in the published form where we have these time jumps that happen once the party gets separated? Was that the way it was originally written? I don't actually know the question. answer to that question. Interesting. Ooh, Sam just put the ring on again, and it says he feels the great burden of its weight and felt afresh, but now more strong and urgent than ever, the malice of the Eye of Mordor. Searching, trying to pierce the shadows that it had made for its own defense, but which now hindered it in its unquiet doubt. Hmm. I'm coming, Mr. Frodo! Orodruin, the mountain of fire. Ever and anon, the furnace is far below, its ashen comb would grow hot, and with a great surging and throbbing, pour forth rivers of molten rock from chasms in its side. In that dreadful light, Sam stood aghast, for now, looking on his left, he could see the tower of Kirith Ungol in all its strength. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. It's a lot bigger than he thought it was, and now he's feeling the true 
like weight of what he's got to do. He's got to get Frodo out of here or die in the attempt. That's some pretty powerful stuff. Like it's do or die. Like this isn't, you know, this is prison of war shit. Like you're not, it's, it's literally life and death. Ah, uh, this is cool. It says as, as Sam gazed at it, he realized that this stronghold had been built not to keep the enemies out of Mordor, but to keep them in. One of the last works of Gondor long ago, an eastern outpost of the defenses of Ithilien. Made when, after the last alliance, men of Westerness kept watch on the evil land of Sauron where his creatures still lurked. Already the ring tempted him, gnawing at his will and reason. Wild fantasies arose in his mind, and he saw Samwise the Strong, hero of the age, striding with a flaming sword across the darkened land, and armies flocking to his call as he marched to the overthrow of Beredur. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. And then all the clouds rolled away, and the white sun shone, and at his command, the Vale of Gorgoroth became a garden of flowers and trees, and brought forth fruit. He had only to put on the ring and claim it for his own, and all this could be. This is pretty awesome. It's an awesome moment of seeing even how the kindest of persons, the, the strongest of heart, can feel the temptation of the ring. And it said here that in this hour of trial, it was the love of his master that also helped him to hold firm. Uh, but deep down inside was still that plain old hobbit sense. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, he's, he, but he comes through it. You know, this is the cool part about Sam. You know, the one small garden of a free gardener was all his need and do. And anyway, all these notions are only a trick, he said to himself. He'd spot me and cow me before I could much as shout out. He'd spot me pretty quick if I put the ring on now in Mordor. It's, 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 it's pretty awesome to see Sam just kind of shrug it off and be like, yeah, I was tempted, but I overcame it. Yeah, just another Tuesday for Samwise Gamgee, the halfling hero. The Two Watchers of the Gate. This part creeped me out when I read it as a child. Um, the great watchers outside of the, the gates here. that he And he runs into that like energy shield that they have between them, right? Three joined bodies, three heads facing outward, vulture faces on their great knees, claw-like hands. Creepy stuff, man. They just knew that an enemy had crossed. Visible or invisible, none could pass unheeded. So it's it's testing his will. So he pulls the vial of Gladriel out. Mm. And a high stroke cry just went up. I've run the front doorbell. So now it's time to move. Like you got no time now, Sam. Like you've you've literally set the alarm off. Ooh, I don't remember this. The two liveries. Um one is obviously the red eye, but it says the other is a moon disfigured with a ghastly face of death. I don't remember that or what it stands for. The shadow and the That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it didn't see a small hobbit. Small frightened hobbit trying to hold a steady sword. It saw a great silent shape cloaked in gray shadow looming against the wavy light behind. In one hand a sword, the other uh, that clutched at its breast but held concealed some nameless menace of doom and power. The elf warrior is loose. I'm coming just to show me the whip. Oh, this is hilarious. So as it turns and runs, Sam's yelling at it. Yes, I am the mighty elven warrior. I'm going to come get you. Sam is weak. He hasn't eaten in a while. The orc is well fed, and off it goes. Up, 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 and up he went. I like the arguing with the orcs here between Shagrat and um, um, Snaga. This is a pretty horrific scene as Shagrat finishes Gorbag off. Jumping onto the fallen body, stamping it, trampling it, stooping out again to stab and slash it. And when he's done and satisfied at last, he drew back his head and let out a horrible gurgling yell of triumph and licked his knife, put it between his teeth, and catching up the bundle, he came loping towards the near door of the stairs. That's pretty horrific. Again, when I first read this at seven years of age, that was a pretty terrifying. This whole chapter was terrifying to me. Um, way beyond what she love was. Uh, he, begins, he begins to sing... They said he thought he heard a faint voice answering him, but now he could hear nothing. So they thought that it was Frodo singing. And he's down here as Snaga puts the ladder upwards and climbs up. You lay quiet or you'll pay for it. You've not got long to live, but you don't want the fun to begin right now. Keep your trap shut, see? 
There's a reminder for you. There was a sound like the crack of a whip. And the rage blazed in Sam's heart to a sudden fury. Up the ladder he goes. Sting in hand. The orc falls back through the trap door as Sam finds Frodo. He's alive. Frodo lives. I just need my can of spray paint to put it on this back wall behind me. Frodo lives. Actually, that's a really good idea. I wonder if I... It would be this wall behind me. I could spray paint that just to have it. The question is, could you read it if I wrote it that way? Frodo lives. Yeah, if I did that. I wonder if I should do that. I wonder if Chris would let me do that. That would be kind of a cool thing, because then I could just... I don't normally like this. This corner doesn't look good anymore. I had a bookshelf back here in the half of 2022, but we were having issues, because where we live, it's in, you know, homestead we're building up. We are having issues with termites. And so we moved that bookshelf so that the termites no longer have a reason to come in this room. Um, it's, it's, it's an issue here. Anyway, there's nothing back here, so I don't often show that corner. But if I had, like, Frodo lives spray painted on the wall, that might be kind of cool. I could get behind that. You never know. Food for thought. So he found Mr. Frodo. Frodo's, like, groggy as all get out. Frodo's freaking out because he thinks the ring is gone. He says, we can't get out. And even if we can, we can't escape. Only the elves can escape. Away, over the sea. If even that is a wide enough gap to keep the shadow out. And Sam's like, oh, they didn't get everything, Mr. Frodo. I took it, begging your pardon, and I've kept it safe. And it's a terrible burn it is, too. But I suppose you must take it back. But now that it came to it, Sam felt reluctant to give up the ring again. You've got it, gasped Frodo. Sam, you're a marvel. Then quickly and strangely, his tone changed. Oh, this is awesome. Give it to me at once. You can't have it. All right, Mr. Frodo. You'll find the ring very dangerous. So he's, if Sam is giving Frodo a warning. If it's too hot a job, I could share it with you, maybe. And Frodo snatches it out of his hand. No, 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 you won't, you thief. Says he panted, staring at Sam with eyes wide with fear and enmity. Then suddenly, clasping the ring in one's clenched fist, he stood aghast. A mist seemed to clear from his eyes, and he passed a hand over his aching brow. The hideous vision had seemed so real to him. Chain, you know, Sam had changed before his very eyes into an orc, leering upon his treasure, a foul little creature with greedy eyes and slobbering mouth, but now the vision had passed. This is a this is a moment they transposed into the Fellowship of the Ring for the films because they gave this moment to, to Bilbo. When Bilbo asked to see the ring in Rivendell, and Frodo was very reluctant, and you see that moment where Frodo sees Bilbo as Gollum snatching for the ring, it's brilliantly done in the film, and I like where they put it, because it, it gave us the exact same visual of how dangerous the ring is, but they just did it in a different place, which is fine for an adaptation. And of course, Frodo realizes immediately... You know, what have I done? What have I done? Forgive me. This ring has a horrible power. At least Frodo has a little bit of a, a sense of humor here. He's like, hopefully you've you've uh, talked to some inns along the way, gotten us accommodations. <laughs> Ooh, this is great. It says, uh, as they're trying to escape the Watchers and everything, they both yell out and they hold up the vial of light and it says the... Uh, there was a crack, and the keystone of the arch crashed almost on their heels. The wall crumbled and fell in ruin. And what's really interesting is it says, As the cry from the watchers went up, far up above in the darkness it was answered. Out of this black sky there came dropping like a bolt, a winged shape, rending the clouds with a ghastly shriek. There is a Nazgul hot on their tails. As we end chapter one in a cliffhanger fashion, not only is Frodo alive, but they are being pursued by a Nazgul trying to escape Kirith Ungol. Um, what a chapter. Adventure, excitement. A Jedi might not crave these things, but hobbits apparently do. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update in this series called Mondays in Middle Earth. New episodes are live every Monday morning, usually at 9 a.m. is the current schedule, central time. So hopefully we'll see you next time. Support if you can. Memberships, super chats, super stickers, super thanks. The Discord channel is down below. We have a Patreon page as well. All those are great ways to support. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and happy reading.